rainstorms an exhibit in the Museum of Science and Industry will be turning five years old next month. So natural phenomena is what we're going for. So there's seven of them in science storms. We have the avalanche disk, which you see behind me, which gets us into forces in motion. Tornado, which gets us into gas laws and thermodynamics. Sunlight, light and optics. Fire, which is our chemistry content. Lightning, so electricity and magnetism. Uh, atoms in motion is another one. And then tsunamis, which gets into waves. Natural phenomena like rainbows and tornadoes and avalanches, um, there's inherent fascination with those. And there's a lot of good basic science that underlies it. So when we thought about it, we decided to use large scale recreations of phenomena as an entry point into conversations about basic physics and chemistry. The entire exhibit was built around getting kids to understand these basic concepts. Now, our vortex is a spinning fluid. Now, we see spinning fluids every day in our own home. Do you guys think of a spinning fluid you see in your own home? Yes. When we designed the exhibit, we really thought a lot about the experience and appealing to a broad range of learners. There's some things that if you are into touching things and interacting with things, we have plenty of those types of exhibits. There's also things that help encourage participation. So between a parent and a child, there's things that they can do together. In some cases, we went out and shot that original footage ourselves. We went tornado chasing for several days, for example, so we shot our own footage there. Um, other, other footage is optioned from various sources, but it was very important for the authenticity of the exhibit to have real footage of the phenomena in this space. It was important to our concept and to our design to recreate them in some way. Uh, so for example, we now have a four-story indoor tornado, it's the only one in the world, um, but that didn't exist. You can't just go out and buy that off the shelf. Exhibits like Science Storms really complement uh, traditional formal education. Uh, we are not, as an exhibit, it is not intended to replace a formal curriculum, but it does support it and it engages kids in the content in a different way that you can't do in a classroom. In 2014, the museum hosted more than 300,000 students, making it the number one field trip destination in Chicago for the sixth year in a row. It's just always nice to get out and have them be introduced to more science. The fundamental science that we, we discuss in Science Storms really underlies so many different things. So I think the, the topic that we cover in here will always be relevant no matter what's going on in the world. So the tsunami tank behind me gets us into the topic of waves. Um, so from a scientific standpoint, waves move energy from one place to another. So with this tank, you can design your own ocean wave or tsunami wave and look at the amount of energy and how that's lost as the wave moves from one side of the tank to the other. This wave tank can act as a research tool to help scientists understand tsunamis better. Natural phenomena are just very complex systems and they're hard to understand. Wave things like this actually are used in research um, by, by uh, tsunami experts who are looking to create those predictive models. I would love to add back in earthquakes. Um, at one point during the concept we talked about that because um, we had a really cool exhibit idea for how to experience an earthquake. If somebody can come out of science storms and even think that science isn't scary, that it's something that they are capable of learning and it's actually pretty cool and fun to do, that's a total win for me.